Here in Nigeria, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, is commemorating the 2019 African Day anti-corruption rally across states with a promise to intensify its efforts. EFCC officials and members of the Civil Society in Kwara State decided to walk the streets of the state capital, Ilori, to educate the people on the effectiveness of the anti-corruption agency and the need for everyone to join in the fight. In Benue State, the head and Kurdi zonal office of the commission, Mr. Johnson Babalola, says over $50 billion is lost from the African continent annually, with Nigeria accounting for the highest. Nigerians were also reminded that keeping mum over corrupt acts waives their right to quality education, health care and other key public infrastructures. It's been estimated that at least about $50 billion have been siphoned out of Africa on a yearly basis through illicit financial flow and a chunk of these uh, come from Nigeria. So there's a need for us to sensitize our people. If you see something, say something. These assets are scattered all over Nigeria, scattered over the world. And there are people that have helped these people, you know, to divide this money and to use it to buy all this property they bought all around the, the, the whole world. So what we are doing is to sensitize our people that this asset that has been traced or the one that has been known to have belonged to these, these desperate people, these, these negative people within that means, are traced and recovered and returned to Nigeria. It is by so doing that this country will move forward. It is by so doing that we discourage others from, from participating or from being, being corruption entrepreneurs. The Algerian parliament has elected an Islamist opposition politician, Suleiman Chenayn, to be its new speaker. The governing FLN party, which holds a strong majority, says it has put the national interest above its own by supporting Mr. Chenayn's bid. His predecessor, Maud Bouchareb, who was a staunch supporter of former longtime president Abdulaziz Bouteflika, resigned last week after months of protests calling for him to step down. A separatist leader in Cameroon, Cho Ayaba, says people in the English-speaking region of the country are fighting for survival and for existence. Thousands of people have been killed and many more displaced in a conflict to the sin that has been going on since 2016. Mr. Ayaba is leader of a group called the Ambazonia Governing Council, which wants to create a separate state, Ambazonia, for the English speakers in the country. Government troops have been accused of extrajudicial killings and burning villages, but recently Recently, there has been a focus on abuses committed by the many separatist groups, including kidnapping. The conflict has displaced more than half a million people, with the UN human rights chief warning that the situation is getting out of control. In the meantime, nine traditional chiefs in Cameroon's northern region have been congratulated at an unorganized ceremony after appointing 123 women to decision-making roles for the first time in their chiefdoms. It is hoped that the move will help those in authority hear about issues affecting women more quickly. Previously, women were not allowed access to chiefs and had to pass their messages through their husbands, who then passed it on to the men working for the chief. This process often meant that the real message never got through. Egypt has opened a new international airport on a one-month trial basis to service the city, which will become the country's new capital from mid-2020. This is due to the fact that the existing capital, Cairo, has become a traffic-clogged urban sprawl of more than 20 million people. The capital international airport is located some 70 kilometers to the east of Cairo and is intended to relieve pressure on Cairo International Airport, a third airport near the Giza Pyramids west of Cairo. The Things International Airport also opened in January. The importance of the capital airport is that it partially eases the pressure on Cairo International Airport and Sphinx Airport. It will be a new outlet for Cairo specifically. Workers are rushing to build core areas of the new capital that will be the seat of Egypt's government.
away from bustling Cairo on the Nile that has become a traffic-clogged urban sprawl of more than 20 million people. The Capital International Airport would operate with an hourly capacity of 300 passengers during the trial phase that is expected to last for a month. We are operating as part of the trial period which will last for a month. During this month, we revise all the operational requirements, safety precautions, and all the security precautions. By the end of the trial period, we will evaluate the whole period and accordingly take the decision to start actual operation. The two new airports built at opposite ends of Cairo are aimed at helping to boost tourism, a key sector in Egypt and a major source of foreign revenue. The sector has been gradually recovering from the political turmoil and security problems that followed the Arab Spring civil unrest of 2011. While the capital international airport will service areas east of Cairo, the Fings International Airport provides access to the west, where the new Grand Egyptian Museum is due to open next year. Finally on the program, Nigeria football fans are thrilled by the team's 2-1 victory over South Africa in the quarterfinals of the Africa Cup of Nations. They're asking the team not to relent and go all the way to lift the trophy. I'm excited that we won. We are through to the next um, stage of um, Hapcon. I mean, this is um, good for. This is good for Nigerian football. I think long before now we've done very, very well, most especially when since the I mean start of the condition. It's beginning to look like we can go all the way. What I notice about the team is that um, for every match they've been improving. And there is I see more of teamwork, you know, in the team. So I think that's just a plus for them. We're in semi-finals, so anything can happen. This is football. This is football, but at the moment, I think we are doing fine. I can't say, but I want to be patriotic. Nigeria will win. Everything is different. The way they play from the first half to the second half, you can see it very clear that Nigeria are playing to win. They are making us proud. It's in the penalty box. Is, uh, Tau's, uh, Meanwhile, in Johannesburg, residents have also been reacting to the exit of the Bafana Bafana of South Africa from the Africa Cup of Nations. While some of the fans feel disappointed, the team could not live up to expectations after their team's famous win against host Egypt. Others commended the team for their effort. It was just brutal, you know, we had all the hope, they gave us false hope. It was too brutal to watch. And the VR system, I think it just worked against us. <laughs> so it's a good thing, but it totally worked against us yesterday. I feel we were betrayed by the boys because we were expecting them home uh, when they were just about to play Egypt and when they won. Uh, they dragged us along and we felt like maybe they stand a chance. And what happened yesterday was really heartbreaking for us. It feels great to be on the winning side. Let's hope they can keep the winning streak going. Well, that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenyola Shivwale. Bye for now.